Yo, what's up people? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Premiere Pro versus Final Cut Pro. Basically exploring both these video editors, listing off just five points on each of the programs that I know is um, very, very, very good and unique to those programs and pretty much just weighing them up. Now, personally, I'm on Windows. I haven't used Final Cut for a while, but I do remember it being an amazing program back in the day when I was trapping out of the MacBooks. But currently, I uh, am a huge Premiere Pro fan and I just kind of wanted to weigh up these two programs, see which one kind of comes out on top. Without further ado, let's jump into Premiere Pro versus Final Cut Pro. Okay, so first off, I'm going to start with uh, Premiere Pro because I know Premiere Pro a little bit better than I do Final Cut. Like I said, that's my current video editor. So to start off with Premiere Pro, the actual unique things about it go kind of as follows. Number one, which I would think is very, very cool and um, actually massively wins versus Final Cut, is that Premiere Pro is cross-platform. Not only is it cross-platform, uh, meaning that it's on Mac and Windows, so everybody can get it no matter what uh, uh, what's called operating system you're on, but I believe there's something coming out called Premiere Pro Clips or something like that as well, and you'll now be able to get Premiere Pro on your uh, iOS device, which is even bigger. That's a whole nother platform that it's on. So Premiere Pro definitely takes the cake. Final Cut, unfortunately, is actually a, uh, a just exclusive to Mac. I'm sure there's maybe some way you could probably get it on Windows with like an emulator or something, but overall it is definitely um, uh, exclusive to Mac on the Final Cut side and Premiere Pro is on all of the platforms. Now the next uh, kind of really, really good point um, is to support Premiere Pro would probably be that the, uh, the, the files are easily transferable. So for example, I shoot a lot of club videos. For example, say um, uh, me and my homie have filmed this, filmed this video because I do it with my friend Noah. Then uh, we, we do most of the edit and then uh, I go away on vacation or something and he needs to uh, do a couple changes to it because the client was unhappy with one little bit. Then boom, say all the files were on my computer, I can easily send him uh, the, the project file and obviously he'll have all the clips as well so it will instantly open up um, and we can kind of be on the same page with the edit. Very, very, very useful if you're working with a team of editors and you kind of need to mix and match files and projects really easily without kind of just transferring, you know, hours and hours and hours worth of, worth of stuff to the other person. Um, so definitely, definitely useful right there. And moving on to the third tip for Premiere Pro would be the color correction. The guy, like I, I didn't even realize how good the color correction was on Premiere Pro, but now I've fully learned about it and um, actually know how to make some really nice color grading and some really nice color correction in there. Um, I exclusively use Premiere Pro for my color stuff, honestly. Like before, I use various other different programs, uh, mixing and matching. Now, doesn't matter what project I edit, I've always, even if I didn't edit it in Premiere Pro, gonna bring my final version and put it in Premiere Pro to at least color correct in Premiere Pro, even if I didn't make the whole edit on it. The color correction is amazing. Honestly, I'd probably go as far as saying uh, Premiere Pro has the best color correction of any program, but I know uh, DaVinci Resolve is pretty good, and um, there's a couple other ones that I forget the name of, but in terms of just all around video editor, Premiere Pro has the 100% best color correction out there, no doubt about that. Next up is going to be export presets. The export presets that uh, Premiere Pro offer are, again, unlike any other program. Uh, I remember even in After Effects, I think you only get maybe like, I'd say 15 at most different options you can export as, whereas Premiere Pro gives you a lot, <laughs> like hundreds. Honestly, it probably has to be uh, several hundred different presets that you can export as. Um, pre presets there are exclusively made for Android phones, for iOS phones, for, for all sorts of dimensions, uh, 4K, everything like that. And it's extremely, extremely useful when you're going to export stuff. I know um, with some programs, when I wanted to upload a video to Instagram, uh, you have to export it in a certain way uh, on other programs. This one, of course, it has a preset for the iPhone. You export it, and instantly that that um, that file is going to be supported on your iPhone. You can put it on your Instagram or, or whatever. And uh, that's just an example. There's a million other presets to kind of handle any other situation you might be in like that. Moving on, um, and this, per for me, for my type of videography and, uh, and video editing, this thing, this last feature works amazing, honestly. And this is the in and out feature in Premiere Pro, where basically when you import all your clips, you have two windows in your Premiere Pro, your actual main window and your kind of a 
pre preview window type of thing. So in Premiere Pro, you can actually import all your clips and then load them up into this left hand side window. And by pressing I and O, so in and out, you can set in and out points of your clip. So for example, I do a lot of club movies, right? I do a lot of club after movies and I'll record for 30 seconds and just five seconds of that 30 seconds might be the bit where I went past a, you know, I mean, really good looking girl or someone put their hands up or uh, some confetti, you know, I mean, any sort of random scenario like that. Um, would have happened, but I only need that five seconds um, and I don't want to have to keep importing a 30 second clip and trimming it down Whereas Premiere Pro allows you to open that up in the left hand side window Press your in and out points on just exactly that little bit of time that you wanted of the clip and then bring it all into your um, Actual timeline and it will just be that selection which saves so much time is an amazing amazing feature and has hands down helped me out and probably saved me hours of time if you really add it up. But those are all my favorite points about Premiere. Honestly, hands down, my favorite video editing program out there currently. Um, moving on to Final Cut, which used to be a huge, huge um, source of entertainment for me because I, I was using Final Cut, Cut a little bit back in the day when I wasn't really making too much money out of my video editing or anything like that. Of course, now I have an office. Um, I'm making all right money now. But back when I was just sort of messing around with making sort of fun projects with my friends, various different things like that, Final Cut was my go-to. And um, Final Cut has a lot of cool features on it as well. For example, um, one of the things that really works well with Final Cut is you can edit 4K footage seamlessly, it seems like, okay? And I believe the reason for this is because it doesn't require near as much processing power as a program like Premiere Pro. For example, in Premiere Pro, um, I do edit all my footage, uh, all the footage me and my homie shoot for clubs is all 4K, so every project we make is a 4K project. And I do know firsthand how hard Premiere Pro can be and how difficult it can be editing 4K footage. It can be really uh, timely on the renders. Um, you always have to play your preview in like uh, an eighth or a quarter of the quality, uh, just or, or else it would just lag. And overall, I definitely know the Premiere uh, that Final Cut Pro is way better for this. Like I said, it requires way less processing power, so you can seamlessly edit 4K footage, and it won't even be lagging or giving you much problem on your program. Next up, which is a huge point in Final Cut's favor, the battery life on your computer is not entirely nuclear bombed when you start editing. Unfortunately, this is a huge factor. Premiere Pro does like to drain battery life, um, especially if you've got a semi-old laptop. The battery, you better keep that thing plugged in while you're editing on Premiere because it's just gonna be gone. Final Cut, like I said, it uses much less processing power, so it has a tendency to last a lot longer than most other video editors would um, just on a battery, you know what I mean? So it's not gonna be draining your computer instantly, it's actually going to be okay. Um, next up on the Final Cut Pro side, the editable motion titles um, and also importable and buyable motion titles are very cool, especially if you're making YouTube videos. Um, it's cool to jazz your stuff up with a cool animated title that comes up and you can even go over to uh, like Video Hive or, or, or one of those kind of stock footage websites and actually purchase yourself editable motion title templates, which are very cool, uh, just to spice up your stuff. Um, very, very cool. Uh, there are similar stuff like this for Premiere, but like I said, um, Premiere Pro requires a lot of processing power. Premiere Pro for me is a great program to piece everything together and then for the higher effects sort of stuff, you want to go over to After Effects or something like that. Whereas Final Cut does a good job of managing the, uh, the actual higher editing style stuff with all the compilation stuff. Next up on the Final Cut Pro list is the, the magnetic um, timeline. So of course Premiere Pro is a standard timeline where you know you just put stuff wherever you want. Final Cut is a little bit more... Um, Ah, thing is, okay, I don't know how I feel about this last one actually, because Magnetic Timeline for me was a little bit weird back in the day, but I know a lot of people that are really, really like it and swear by it, and the Magnetic Title is basically where you import your clip and it locks, you know what I mean? So you put a clip in the middle of two clips, and um, it's gonna push those two clips to the side, you know what I mean? It's a Magnetic Timeline, um, and overall, this is a plus or, or downside, I guess it's a plus because it's a little bit easier. You're not gonna lose stuff. Everything's kind of nice in place and locked.
but it can also be a downside um, because that for me I feel like I have less freedom when it's forcing me to do something like that but either way very very cool and um, finally on the list for the Final Cut Pro is the import previews now even though Premiere Pro offers some amazing options for uh, in and out in your clips once you've actually brought them into your um, editor Premiere Pro of course Final Cut, however, offers something very, very cool as well, where you can actually have an import preview. If you go to import five clips, you see a preview of them all before you actually actually fully import them into the program, so you can decide uh, if you want them or not in the program. This is kind of cool. Kind of also doesn't really matter if Premiere Pro had something like the in and out points. Either way, it's up to you guys. That is the end of my comparisons right here. Tell me in the comment section below. If you like Premiere Pro more, if you like Final Cut Pro more, which one you thought is the best, or if you don't use either, I'd probably suggest Premiere Pro, unless you have a, a, a not very powerful laptop or computer, then go over to Final Cut, um, but overall, thank you guys for watching today's video, if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, I've been Jeff, have a nice day, and goodbye.